It's been an interesting week. Did you know that there is a case before the Supreme Court this week that has very serious ramifications for the future? Did you? No. No. Well, I didn't either. But a thing came up during the week, and it suddenly grabbed my attention, and it caused me to have to focus on a certain amount of detail. So I want to tell you a little about it. Ooh. It's a Fourth Amendment case. Now, if you remember, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution is the amendment about the right of of people to be secure in their persons, papers, houses, and effects, oh, right? And it's, it's sometimes called the right about search and seizure. It's what prevents the government from just coming in and searching and looking for anything. Mm -hmm. And this particular case that's before the Supreme Court is called U.S. versus Jones. And it's about a GPS, a global positioning system device, that was attached by the government to Jones's car. And they traced the movements of his car for two months. And then in the court case, they attempted to use the movements of his car to implicate him in potential criminal activity. This got to the the appeals court and then to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And the implication is this, that the tracking of, his, of the movements of his car was a, a public thing. There was no proper, there was no, none of his rights were being violated by attaching this, this device to his car. So, when I heard that, I went, that's very interesting. And I had to start to do some research and take a look at what else is contained in this Fourth Amendment. The other part of the Fourth Amendment has to do with the thing about warrants being issued. That it, the Fourth Amendment says that no warrants shall issue except upon probable cause uh, that is uh, by affirmation or oath where someone has to actually say that, there's, that they suspect a, a, a criminal activity and they have to show that the government can go in and search for it. So I had to take a look further and go back and, and, and talk about the Fourth Amendment. You know, we have this amendment to the Constitution that's supposed to prepare, uh, respect our, our rights or protect our rights, but what exactly are those rights? The Fourth Amendment of the Constitution was proposed originally in seven, or 1791 by James Madison. He presented the, the Fourth Amendment. And the whole idea behind the Fourth Amendment was that before the Revolutionary War, the British Crown issued what they called writs of assistance. And what a writ of assistance was, was a, what they called a general warrant. It gave the officers the right to go in and search and seize anything and anybody in the, whenever they suspected that there might be a, cr a crime of any kind, and then to take the, the fruits of the search, whatever they accomplished, and then use that against the person. In other words, and that had the Fifth Amendment uh, implication about the right to incriminate yourself. So in other words, People could write things in their private papers. The government could come in, seize all the papers, say, well, you wrote this thing, and it was against the king, so therefore you're, you're guilty of treason, and you're off to jail. And the founders of the country were very much against this, and the country was up in arms about it. Where did they get this idea that people ought to be secure? Well, you have to go back earlier. You have to go to a fellow by the name of John Locke, who I've talked about. Now, John Locke was an, an English philosopher and writer and politician and doctor from the 17th century. And uh, in 1789, or 1689, excuse me, he, 
he wrote what he called, there were called two treatises on civil government. And initially he published those anonymously because if he had put his name to them, he would have been arrested and sent to the tower. Later he, he added his name to it. And the interesting thing was there were two books of it. One, he argued against the divine right of kings. And his arguments were really cool because they were based on the Bible and the fact that, uh, that supposedly God gave to Adam the right to rule over the, the, the beasts and the land of the earth. But he never gave Adam the right to rule over other men. So if the kings came down through Adam as their, their source of their authority, hence God, they, they may have had the right to rule over land, but not over, the, over people, which is a very interesting thing. That was his book one. But the second treatise, though, was the one that our founding fathers found very, very fascinating, and they used as the basis of the American Revolution to a large extent. Because it had this idea that there was, that people entered into government because of a social contract. In other words, the individual had all the rights and all the freedom, and they voluntarily surrendered part of that right to the government for their own benefit. As a matter of fact, he invented the term commonwealth with the idea of, of the social contract in mind. So where is all, am I going with this? So I had to go farther. And 44 years ago, in the, the Brennan Supreme Court, a just, Justice Brennan handed down a decision that amended the Fourth Amendment. What he did was he removed property rights from the I, I, and the right of an individual to be secure in his property and changed it with the idea of privacy so that the right became a right to privacy, not a right to have your property protected. And so for the last 44 years, the government has used that as their basis for issuing warrants to be able to come and see stuff in your house. The question is, do you have, did you have an expected right of privacy? If you did, didn't, then they can legally come in and search and seize your stuff. And right now they're arguing about this GPS thing being there was no assumed right of privacy. Well, where does this go? This has huge implications in the information age. Because if the government, if they decide this case in the favor of the government, then that means your email isn't secure, your iPhone isn't secure, your car is not secure. They can come and take all of the information about your private dealings and then use that against you in, in court in pursuant of a possible crime, which, result, which is in effect a general warrant. However, if the court actually would uphold this, the original po property rights and go back to what the Fourth Amendment says, which they could do, uh, our rights would take a great leap forward. So it's been an interesting week, and I, I hope the, the Supremes decide the right thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ray. Please write a note to Ray.